One question on the minds of SpaceX fans that have been following the testing and development of the Starship is when will the Super Heavy be launched? The booster rocket, one half of the company's next generation spacecraft, has encountered delays after delays, which have prevented it from undergoing its first orbital flight. However, thanks to hard work by the SpaceX team, the Super Heavy is finally ready for launch in July. What has SpaceX changed to get to this monumental stage? Which new features has the company added to Super Heavy? And when in July will the booster fly? Join us as we bring you how SpaceX is finally launching the Super Heavy in July. Building a rocket is hard, but SpaceX, led by the visionary CEO Elon Musk, is used to doing hard stuff. It is thanks to his doggedness that it can boast of the position it now occupies in the space industry. However, even the company will tell you it is hard to build a reusable rocket. Musk's plan for the Starship is for it to be reusable completely so that it can be reflown many times just like a typical aircraft. If not, his plan to take people to Mars to live there permanently is dead on arrival. Reusing the Starship will massively reduce the operating costs because space-going rockets are among the most expensive things out there that you can buy. Musk is looking at a launch cost of about $2 million, which will commoditize space travel. At about 100 passengers per trip, any Mars volunteer resident can easily meet up with the payment and relocate to another planet. How cool is that? What is not so cool is developing and testing a spacecraft powerful enough to handle the rigor of the long trip to the Red Planet. SpaceX chose a two-stage design that involves a booster, the Super Heavy, and the upper stage, known as the Ship or simply Starship. The two will separate once the spacecraft escapes from the gravitational force of the Earth, and while the upper stage will continue on its way to Mars or any other destination, the Super Heavy will return to the Earth to prepare for the next launch, which could be in under an hour. The booster will land on its retractable legs or use another of Musk's crazy ideas, be caught in mid-air with a pair of arms attached to the launch tower. Never mind that it would be the heaviest object somebody ever tried to catch. The Super Heavy is a massive structure, standing at about 70 meters. It forms a unique skyline at SpaceX's facility in Boca Chica, Texas, where the development and testing are happening. It is also 9 meters wide, but that is a step down from the initial 12 meters that Musk envisioned at the onset of the development. Multiple upgrades, which we will get to soon in this video, have significantly improved the total thrust the booster can produce. Months back, it was thought that the B-4 booster prototype combined with the S-20 ship would be used for the first orbital flight, but it is now confirmed that the honor will go to the B-7. However, this prototype has not had the smoothest development journey, not close to the easy run of its predecessor, which did not even see a single static fire test. The team had to rush the booster away from the orbital launch site for repairs after it suffered damage during its first round of testing. It is the first booster equipped with a 33-engine puck. It is also the first finished Starship prototype capable of working with the new Raptor V2 engines. SpaceX also installed on Booster 7 for the first time secondary header tanks which store landing propellant. To prepare for the impact of the changes, the Super Heavy SpaceX had to specifically modify the structural test stand by outfitting it with 13 hydraulic rams to simulate the full thrust of the booster. However, even with the damage, it appears SpaceX was able to at least simulate the thrust of the new Raptor engines and even achieve some major mechanical stress tests. However, a leaked image would later show the damage inside the booster that forced the team to abandon the initial test. From the photo, it seems the booster suffered an operational failure rather than a design failure. Undeterred, SpaceX took the damaged B-7 back to the high bay for a repair and was soon back on the test stand. It then quickly completed some tests to confirm the prototype was back in action. The next thing was a cryogenic proof test involving filling the tanks completely with about 3,000 tons or 6.5 million pounds of liquid nitrogen and oxygen. However, another trip to the Starbase's build site was necessitated, which suggested ironically that either something was wrong again with the booster or everything was fine. In the first scenario, the prototype would have developed some faults that needed to be looked into before the next series of tests took place. On the other hand, it could mean that SpaceX had rapidly achieved the objectives of the test and was simply moving it back to the high bay to prepare for the next stage of the testing. Without official confirmation, it was hard to say which was the case, although SpaceX, having already brought out the Raptor installation stand before returning it, could be interpreted as SpaceX would have continued the testing if something serious had not come up. The next goal at that time then appeared to be the installation of the new Raptor engine on the B-7 prototype, as observers reported seeing some units of the engines with clear markings lying around. 
However, with the way the new bay is designed, enthusiasts with cameras are not able to get really good shots of the booster in development, making it harder than before to track what the team is up to. But two weeks later, with SpaceX appearing to be taking its time, it seems the team had been simultaneously encasing Booster 7's Raptors and engine section in shrouds that will protect them during static fire testing. The shroud will also protect the engines during launch, re-entry and landing if B-7 makes it that far. However, Musk would later confirm that the team was installing the new rocket engines on the Super Heavy. He also mentioned that SpaceX had already produced all the engines it needed for the first orbital test. That would mean not less than 40 engines in total. The booster requires 33, while the ship needs 7 after the upgrade to the rocket system. The company had already been spotted moving multiple Raptor engines to the high bay on Starbase, corroborating Musk's report. Interestingly, the Booster 4 only required a few days to install all the 29 Raptor engines, although they were ultimately spared a static test. However, the installation of the heat shield took several weeks. Meanwhile, SpaceX has now added grid fins to the B-7 Super Heavy, showing the company really plans to go far with this prototype. In a parallel effort, SpaceX has been refilling the Starbase orbital launch site's huge tank farm in preparation for a full wet dress rehearsal. The tank farm can store, subcool, and distribute thousands of tons of liquid oxygen, liquid methane, liquid nitrogen, and so forth. As for how the much-anticipated static fire test would be done, Musk has revealed SpaceX is taking a cautionary approach by testing the engines one at a time. However, since the reality of testing one engine at a time means the team would spend weeks, it is safe to say this was a bit of exaggeration from the CEO. He likely meant to convey the idea that SpaceX would not leap into testing all the 13 engines at the center at once, for example. Fast forward to a few weeks later and the Super Heavy is back on the launch mount. Altogether, B-7 spent about six weeks in its last stint in the high bay. This time, the Super Booster may not leave again until after the first orbital launch has been concluded. The booster appeared, showing major changes from how it was when it was moved back. The team had completed installing aero covers, surfaces known as chines or strakes, car-sized grid fins, and Starlink internet dishes. The most notable change was that the booster now sported 33 of the Raptor V2 engines. This means at full operation, B7 can produce up to 7,600 metric tons, or almost 17 million pounds of thrust, about 41% more than its predecessor. We also confirmed the Raptor's heat shield was in place. This is a massive turnaround in speed, as the same process on the B4 took about six months. But the rapid assembly of B7 is not surprising, given that SpaceX seems intent on getting to the static fire testing stage as soon as possible. The giant arms on the launch tower were again in action as they were used to lift the booster onto the launch mount. Of course, their major purpose is to catch the Super Heavy, but for now, they're being used to replace the tall and unwieldy crane that would have been necessary to put the booster on the mount. They are a better option anyway, as the cranes tend to be affected by the wind. The next step after installing on the launch mount is to secure the 20 clamps that hold the rocket prototype down and connect the booster to the ground system in preparation for the next stage of pre-flight testing during which we will hear the roar of all the 33 Raptor 2 engines for the first time. Let's hear what you think of the Super Heavy in the comments section below.